So let's start. Alright, who doesn't know it? Uh, the parasites are in August, so you would like to watch... Um, what are they called? Um, the things you wish on, and but you can't see them always. And Jan Sundermann is looking at this. He's an engineer and astronomer, and he works at the in spectroscopy at the observatory in I forgot. All right, thanks a lot for the introduction about spectros spectroscopy. We heard something earlier, uh, so you inspect the light of stars and. Um, fun things like exoplanets, those are of course very advanced uh, subjects, um, where from flying uh, space telescopes in space you can see, but also from telescopes on Earth. And there are a lot of different factors here which make this possible, such as the Perseids. Um, you can even identify exoplanets. And we have this association, um, amateur observatory Neanderthal Hochtal in uh, somewhere between Düsseldorf and Wuppertal. And you can um, imagine that is an area that is very densely populated and not the ideal place for astronomy. So we uh, formed a working group there. And here are the names of that working group of the members. And everything I'm presenting now is a collaborative work of this working group. And um, it also happened in a time without stars, this idea. And our idea was that we would look into light pollution for a bit, because we need, for one, a clear sky, but also a clean sky to make good astronomical observations. And you should really notice over the decades that the the sky at night is no longer really dark, and what kind of influence that has on people and animals and the environment. I don't want to talk about that, but we um, task ourselves to use our devices, our instruments, to inspect this light pollution a bit more closely because it disturbs the visual observations and it disturbs even more the astrophotography and spectroscopy itself. So, as I said, this, this is the observatory in Schanhöhe, a bit to the right of this uh, marker in the middle of the map. It's a bit east of Düsseldorf, uh, which is down there, the bright point, well, that is Neuss, and above is Duisburg. So, uh, along the Rhine, you can see it's a very densely populated area, which um, results in this brightness at night um, uh, we can see with our own eyes. And this map you can see find on the internet under this lightpollutionmap.info address, and you can check there for your own position, current data in this map. Uh, it's refreshed every couple of years, um, the data that's behind this, and then you can look where around you there it might be a bit more dark at night, or if you really want to see the parasites on an uh, already bright summer night sky, where you might be able to um, drive a bit um, to have success in observing it. But a map like this reflects the absolute um, brightness of the sky in a clear night, and there are specific measuring instruments in astronomy. We use the magnitude as bright um, and this map was uh, created through um, measurements from different positions. What we've done now, we're not directly interested in the absolute brightness, but we wanted to know what kind of light is that, what kind of colors are there uh, disturbing our recordings. And we took out our spectroscopes for this and measured the intensity uh, across the whole color spectrum. And it looks a bit like this. You can see those gray bars up there. Those are uh, several recordings into different um, directions which were put next to each other where we can see these white spectral lines. So 
As mentioned the, earlier, the Fraunhofer lines in the f presentation by Knut, there, there they have dark absorption lines, but here in front of a uh, dark background we have these bright emission lines, they're called. And these images uh, generated with an electronic camera are evaluated um, by magnitude, and then you can see these curves down there in the lower part of the picture. Um, although those were also um, shown next to each other as above, so those aren't the uh, absolute brightnesses, but you can see in parallel um, one curve has peaks, another curve doesn't have those peaks, or they're weaker. But what this is, that's the question now. So, for observing the sky, we use these telescopes. And this is a mirror telescope. And next to it, on the lower left, there is this white box. And then in the back, you can see the um, body of a digital um, XLR, I think it's called. And this is the digital spectroscope where that contains the optical elements with which we can split the light um, that we see through the telescope optics. And for this measurement, we didn't use a telescope like this, but we wanted, as we'll see later, uh, to be mobile with this. So uh, we connected this spectral apparatus to a um, zoom objective. And with this zoom lens, we made this uh, these sky measurements. But in the spectroscope itself, the most important element is a so-called reflection uh, grid, I think. And that's uh, a mirror with 200 lines per millimeter. And then that looks like a CD. Uh, if you hold it into the light, you uh, the light is split into its spectral colors. And then this signal is captured and evaluated. Is there anyone else there? Ja, genau, richtig. Die würden beide Breakouts. Also beim zweiten kann ich dabei sein nach der Manuela, aber beim äh, Jan jetzt halt nicht. Uns interessierte jetzt aber in dem Fall. And we are interested in the light contamination and technique. And for this. In last spring, we took uh, cloudy nights and took our um, zoom lens with the spectral apparatus and pointed into the sky in different directions. And and then we measured these emission peaks, and then there was this. Uh, and then at the bottom of the scale, we can see these um, lines that go up vertically. This is an extra calibration lamp where we can see neon light from a neon lighting bulb, uh, which we added because those lines we know exactly where they are. And with those lines, we can get a uh, scale and then know the actual wavelengths of the other lines. So in spectroscopy, you always work um, by putting the blue corner on the left and then on the right, the red end of the visible spectrum. So on the left, we have the short wavelengths. Uh, here shown in angstrom, and then on the right in red, uh, going over into infrared, we see the long wave lights of the light. And uh, what can really disturb such a recording is um, not just on the cloudy sky what we recorded there, but there can actually be these disturbances. Um, in a clear observation night as well. And this is an example from Harald from our group, who um, did a large um, area but weak um, object. So that's the North America nebula, which is a cloud of gas and 
uh, dust which uh, is which shines by itself and then in the curve below it the red one you can see the light pollution at the same location in a cloudy sky and in the upper sky in the upper curve we can see several peaks or emission lines that are not in the lower one and those are the emission lines that come from this uh, gas nebula and with uh, suitable programs you can um, subtract these curves from each other mathematically and then you get the pure lines of the emission nebula of this gas usually hydrogen and oxygen nitrogen and then you get those all right the light pollution that we um, have seen with these recording in the different directions we wanted to identify this where does this come from and so we took out our spectral apparatus with camera and the zoom lens and we walked through or drove through uh, the city and uh, recorded some examples of different lamps so from the street lights that we saw there and this first one is the classic yellow light that you um can see in street lights and also in industrial areas often uh, in industrial halls so that's the sodium uh, vapor lamp i think and a spectrum on the right you can see the individual emission lines because in this lamp uh, sodium is vaporized and then it shines in its fairly uh, pure yellow spectrum and here's a different example we found uh, the modern street lights with leds uh, where there are pure white led lamps as well as ones that are a bit uh, tinted especially where there's uh, crosswalks I think. and you can see a big difference to the image earlier this led lamp because it's supposed to shine white it is composed out of a big area in the visible spectrum also has a peak in the red area but at the end you have there all the different colors and it's a big it's almost a normal distribution of these wavelengths so that you can already imagine this is difficult to uh, filter out and in between we have the generation of street lamps with these um, fluorescent lights uh, which might contain uh, quicksilver uh, which is a metal that's uh, vaporized in this lamp and then has a single sharp emission line and we have very different kinds of emission from these very different kinds of um, methods of illumination and these individual spectra from the different light sources we took and um, made an image of this whole contaminated of this uh, cloudy sky and associate them and you can definitely see uh, find them in there so you can uh, see the peak of the uh, fluorescent lights or also the uh, natrium uh, sodium area with the uh, closely clustered lines and you can see all this in the light that gets reflected from the cloudy sky and which we then also get in a seemingly clear dark night and it's still in there nonetheless there are still lines here which we have not uh, observed so there are still other light sources that could be for instance um, vehicles so xenon or those halogen lamps or in Düsseldorf itself there are uh, streets and in the old city there are parks and uh, sidewalks which are really lit with gas lamps so uh, gas is actually being burned there um, and those lamps are protected uh, monuments and those might also be in here but we have not identified this closer we wanted to see what is going on there and what 
kind of lights are disturbing there, observing the sky visually or with photographs. And the conclusion is that um, it has gotten worse uh, due to this LED light, because this um, sodium light can be filtered out. You can take a filter that's designed uh, for this, which just filters out a, a small area of the spectrum, and then you have the information of the rest of the spectrum to the right and left of it. You have that in your image. But the disturbing light of a single sodium lamp or a single uh, Quicksilver one it can be filtered out through a good filter uh, when taking a photo. But with this LED lamp, that's more difficult because we have seen it's almost a normal distribution across the whole spectrum, uh, the emission lines, and you can't really filter that out. You would filter out all the other information as well so and destroy this information so you wouldn't have anything left in the measurement so one important uh, realization is and we communicated this uh, to the people from the um urban works i think as well if you uh, take this LED lights, which uh, saves energy, then you should also go so far that you make it very targeted um, lighting technology in the city and um, avoid as much as possible having light leak into the sky. And also maybe control the lights so that um, if nothing is there no traffic, then maybe you can turn them off as well. Uh, there are also smart systems for this, of course. So this is our conclusion. We can do a lot with filters. Um, with LED lamps, we can't do anything. We can only um, uh, call upon the responsible places to do responsible lighting of only where you really uh, need it and uh, ensure that there's as little uh, leaked light as possible. And this whole subject that I described now, we have created two posters about it as well, one in German, one in English, uh, was presented at the last uh, Congress in Lübeck. Um, and they're at VDS Astro, so that's the spectroscopy conference. Uh, you can download them as well and distribute them wherever you want, if anyone's interested. And the poster is available for free use. Yeah, thanks a lot for paying attention. Uh, slightly complicated subject, but uh, very uh, concrete one. So in astronomy, we are not um, only looking at very exotic things. We can also use our devices for very um, practical.